Now, as some of you may know from our previous video, we were exploring the functions and uses which you can have with WMI and how great and powerful they are for things like scripting in terms of being able to tell if a product is already installed or not. Today, we're going to look at yet another option, which is in this case, real time monitoring and how WMI can be used to generate or record information and then present it back. So with that said, I want to show you a live example of how that can be done and what it looks like. So first of all, let's show you what it looks like. So here's a nice example of real time monitoring of both the CPU, the disk and a service function. Now to prove that it's real time, I'm just going to go in and stop the service function and then start it again to show the change in statuses. As you can see, this is a real time thing and it's easy enough to set up that we're going to be able to cover it in the course of this video. I hope you stay tuned. Now, if you haven't had a chance already to review the previous video, now is a great opportunity to go back or alternatively subscribe as we intend to produce more of these videos on a regular basis. Now let's go ahead and open up our Visual Studio code and start creating the parameters that we need. Now, for those of you who looked at the previous video, you'll know we covered things like a WMI Explorer. So you have the ability to go in and find out what WMI mom elements you need to be able to create these kind of functions. And for those of you who don't, there is also the option to go and read the Microsoft TechNet and explore what is available. Personally, I find it much faster to go and look at the Explorer and get the queries back yourself. So in this case, we're going to use two elements that we used previously. So we're going to use the, the namespace and we're going to use the class, but we're also going to use filters in this case. So as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and type out a filter and I'm going to use this filter to identify a Windows service. In this case, the Windows service I'm going to be monitoring is one called um, Workstation. Simple enough service. It's something that basically is used to contact uh, your servers or other shared resources from other machines. So it's kind of an important one because without it, you can't do much. We're also going to use a service class in this. So we're going to create uh, this case, the Windows 32 service class. Um, it's a pretty much a regular one that you're going to find in a lot of places that can be used for uh, querying the status of a service. Now, with that said, I'm going to use the WMI get object, and then I'm going to pass all of the previous values that you see above with one single command. Now, I've made a typo here because I've used the at instead of the dollar sign, so I'm just going to switch that round. And then we're going to show you the output by running it quickly. Now, as you can see, we have the output showing the service, the status. Um, so that, that's a good start, right? Now we're going to expand on that a little bit. So we're now going to write out to the host environment, uh, first of all, the status and then the service running. So in this case, I'm going to just quickly put in disk as an example and then status. So this isn't really a disk class. I should probably use something else, but you know, I, I'm just merely typing in here. So it doesn't really matter for the final result. So I'm going to go to get status and you see status is okay. Now, maybe I don't want status, maybe I want state, so I can return a value that says, okay, I'm running, or I'm stopped, or whatever the service state is for that particular element. So I'm going to write this out to host, and then because I want to put some additional text around it, you see the sub-element of that uh, variable that I've created changes color. So in order to solve this, because it's now a different element, I need to enclose it in some more brackets. And then you see, we finally get the result I'm looking for. If I didn't do that, I'd end up with a result potentially on a different line or alternatively not showing at all. So now that we've put all the basic elements together, we're going to go that one step further and start to encompass it with a couple of checks and go in and throw some do while statements in there and a little bit of time. So I'm going to put in a time schedule that says if the script is running for more than 30 minutes, it will just close itself. 
So here you can see a much larger version with a few more uh, variables added, but the same basic principle. So we have a do and we have a while, and that's checking against the time value. But the rest of it is still a WMI query, in this case a couple different ones, one for CPU, one for disk, etc. And if I go ahead and run that in a regular PowerShell session and just do that, you can see immediately we start getting output, which proves that, amongst other things, it's a real time. So I'm checking in this case once a second. So every one second I'm getting output and it's real. So any changes that happen, happen to that. Now hopefully you found this video instructive. If you did, give us a like. If you didn't, give us a comment and maybe some feedback and we'll see what we can do about future ones. And until then, thank you for watching.